Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Minister Justin Dillard. I thank the Lord for you all taking the time out to join me one more time in fellowship, to join me one more time to have worship, to join me one more time to hear another message. I really appreciate your feedback. I really appreciate your kind and uplifting words that you have said to encourage me. I thank you also for the prayers that you have sent my way for me and my family. I would like to go ahead and get started by playing a song. This song is called Stand By Me, and Brother Anthony Williams will be ministering to us. The song was originally sung and ministered by the staple singer, Stand By Me. Praise the Lord for the song, Stand By Me, sung and played by Brother Anthony Williams, originally sung and ministered by the staple singer, Stand By Me. I will go ahead and read the scripture. The scripture for today is Matthew, the 14th chapter, 22 through 33. Matthew, the 14th chapter, 22 through 33. And the scripture reads thusly, 
Jesus walks on the sea. This is from the New King James Bible Version. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Well, he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Tossed by the waves from the wind, for the wind was contrary. So contrary is fighting them to push them back. Now in the fourth hour, or in the fourth watch, this is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water. Notice this. Jesus, gave, Jesus gives us an invitation to share authority. And when... Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. So Peter could have heard the, the noisy racket of the wind. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us bow for a brief moment of prayer. Lord, right now in this season, we just pray and ask you to please forgive us for our sins, our shortcomings, our transgressions. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how. And Lord, we thank you that you're a forgiving God. Lord, we thank you for being a wonderful Savior, a wonderful Counselor, a mighty God, a Prince of Peace. Lord, we thank you for being there for us. Lord, we thank you for in this scripture we see that you came to the disciples. Lord, you came to them. Peter had faith to get out on the water. Peter had faith to walk in authority. But Lord, sometimes we may become discouraged because of the hot wind or the cold wind or whatever type of wind is blowing hot air or cold air or whatever is blowing. We may hear this. We may hear the, the, the rustling of leaves. We may hear the sound of distraction. We may hear this and that. But And we may lose focus on you. Lord, we have encouragement to keep our focus on you and to be faithful in you. Because as we see, when Peter cried out, you came and you reached out your hand and you saved him. You delivered him from his situation. And then when they both reached the boat, the winds ceased. So Lord, we thank you that they came back to the boat and everything was okay. And Lord during this life and time where we have 
a chance and opportunity to develop our faith, we ask that you please help us to think back to this story or other th stories in which you helped out this person or that person. You helped them to increase their faith. Lord, we know that we can, we can just go ahead and say that we're in good hands when our hand is in Jesus. We're in good hands when our hand is in Jesus. Praise the Lord. We are in good hands when our hands are in Jesus. Lord, we don't have to doubt. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We can block out distraction. We can block out the winds and the waves because when I was reading this text, it was going on. It was, it was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Then it went down and said that he saw a ghost. They saw a ghost. They thought it was a ghost. But Lord, in your word it says, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. And Lord, we thank you that we can get close to you, have a relationship with you, so that we know what your voice sounds like, so that we know that it's you. And Lord, sometimes our mind may try to play a trick on us, but Lord, we can know and we can see and we can discover and realize that you would not harm us in any way. And Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I would like to go ahead and state the title again. I would like to state the title again. We're in good hands when our hand is in Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're in good hands when our hand was when our hand is in Jesus. Now I thought about many titles about get close to Jesus or get closer to Jesus or don't allow hawk to scare you and hawk is the weather and during this time the weather changes and we we feel a wind a wind blowing we we feel a change in the climate during this fall season we see a change and sometimes it's later on that it changes but where I'm at, there's a difference in the temperature. It's around 55 right now where I'm at in the morning. Now we feel a difference in the weather. But if we've been around long enough and been through testing times long enough, we will not be surprised. But in this account, and there's other renditions of this uh, of what happened in Mark and also in John, we see Peter decided to get out in on the water. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus commanded, come, and Peter came. What I noticed in the text is that when Jesus went out to pray, he went to the mountain to pray. And then it was later on, he came walking on the water. But before that, it talked about the climate and the winds were blowing. And, and then it comes back, well, it comes back again later on and say, say that the winds were boisterous when Peter began, Peter's faith began to shake. So for that point, I would like to say, have unshakable faith. Have unshakable faith. When Jesus says it, it settles it. When Jesus told Peter to come, all he needed to do is just come. He didn't need to be distracted. He didn't need to look to the right or the left. He just needed to come to Jesus. I'm reminded when a parent, tells their, their baby to come and they hold out their hands. The 
baby trusts the parent because the parent has built up in trust in the child. It starts out, they're close, and then the parent widens up the little gap in between. And then over the, the length of time, the gap is widened. And then the child comes, 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 and finally comes to the parent, and the parent is happy. But we can get so excited that Jesus comes to us. Some of us say that we came to Jesus, but actually he came to us. Praise the Lord. I would like to bring up this story right here. The true story of the three little pigs. Now we understand about the story of the three little pigs. There were three houses. But what this is what happened. In this rendition of the three little pigs, the wolf has his story to tell. And, and many times when someone is preaching, some people may say, ah, I've heard it before, or they want to tell their rendition. They want to tell their story. But the person that is speaking or preaching, they're telling their story, their rendition. Praise the Lord. They want to rain on that person's parade. So here's what the the wolf says, his story. And this is by John Sienska, illustrated by Lane Smith. The true story of the three little pigs. Now this wolf says it all started out when he was baking a cake for his grandmother. And he ran out of sugar and on that day he had a terrible sneeze. And so he went to look for sugar and he came onto the pig's house, the first little pig. And he knocked on the door and asked anybody, is anybody home? He didn't hear anybody. But the, the first house was built of straw. And when he knocked on the door, it fell in. And then he started. He said, wait a minute. He huffed and he snuffed. And he sneezed the house of straw and it was destroyed. And he saw a little pig laying right there, dead. And so he said, why should I allow this ham to go to waste? And so the wolf ate the pig. Then he looks and he goes to the next house built of wood. And this pig told him to go away, but he didn't want to do that. And so he huffed and he snuffed and he sneezed. And he saw the wood go all over the place. And in this page, the pig was shaving. And he saw the pig right there and he ate the pig. But then he comes to the third house. Remember, he's looking for sugar. And so the, pigs, the pig knew what the wolf was up to. He knocked on the brick house. No answer. And then he called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what the rude little pork, porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. Now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, fellow. But when somebody talks about my granny like that, 
I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The wolf is trying to play the victim. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporter found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. And that's it. The real story I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. Now here's the last page. And the moral of the story is everyone is always trying, well, some people are trying to make up an excuse why they're not the bad person. The storms of life may blow, but I'm reminded by the song, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Is your soul anchored in the Lord on today? I would like to read some of the lyrics to the song. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell my night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the Word of God I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and immovable despite the tide. But if the storms don't cease, but in case the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. Billows may roll. The breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the day. Clouds in the sky. I know it's all right. Because Jesus is not. My soul has been anchored. 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 My, 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 my soul. My soul has been anchored. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell my night from day, still that hope lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are in good hands when our hand is in Jesus. We are in good hands when our hand is in Jesus. Peter was safe when his hand was in Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we can be safe when our hand is in Jesus. How do we put our hand and our trust in Jesus? Jesus said, come. That's a command. Peter said, command me to come if it's really you. And Jesus said, come. Are we willing to come when Jesus commands us to come, are we willing to listen to Jesus' voice? Do we know his voice? Well, here's a good chance for us to get to know Jesus better, to have a little closer walk with Jesus, to get closer to Jesus. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the doors of the church are open. Here's your opportunity, your chance to get closer to Jesus. There are so many things happening in this world on today. 
There has been a school system that has been closed down because they are providing shelters for those who have lost homes and gone through this storm crisis dealing with um, Hurricane Ian and other situations, flooding and loss of power. And we just pray for those right now. We lift them up. We also pray for those that are going through other situations. Those who have um, um, been in the hurricane um, called Fiona in Puerto Rico and other places we pray. South Carolina and other places who were hit by Ian and other things that are going on in the communities. We pray for people right now, Lord. We lift them up right now. Those who have been through surgeries, those who ha are recovering from surgery, those who are coming out from all type of rehab and those who are going through situations, Lord, those who are playing in athletic events right now, Lord, we pray for parents that they will calm down and stop shooting at these events and, and these children will stop and, and youth will stop shooting at these events. We pray for those who, who enjoy lying and, and, and we pray for them right now, Lord, that you will touch their hearts so that they will stop lying on other people. Praise the Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that our soul can be anchored in you. If it's you out there who has been going through turbulent storms, and you realize by seeing Peter, and Peter was a good example, how Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Here's your opportunity to go to Jesus and say, Lord, I need to trust you a little more. And how do we do that? Lord, please forgive us for our sins. Please Turn us around, Lord, and place us on the right road right now, Lord. We thank you for forgiving us, and we believe in you. We believe in you, Jesus, that you're the Son of God. You're the Messiah, you're the, Messiah the Savior that Matthew speaks about. Lord, we just thank you for Matthew's account in the Word of God and the Gospel. And Lord, the Gospel is the good news, and the good news is... We can trust in Jesus and we can have that faith of a mustard seed that we can tell that mountain to go jump in a lake. And we can believe and we can forgive others. And Lord, we thank you for forgiving us. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for that one who repented, believes in Jesus, and believes that God raised Jesus from the dead. And they are safe right now. Their opportunity, Lord, to either recommit or to come to you where they can daily seek you by getting into the Word of God. Everyone has a weakness. Everyone has a place where they can grow. And all we need to do is just get into the Word of God. And some Bibles in the back, you can just look up different topics on faith, on love, whatever it may be on whatever it may be and then study those scriptures and then if you read your Bible every day you will grow grow and you will grow and so Lord we just thank you we give you all the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name amen amen and amen well my brothers and sisters we see that in this particular text where the the winds were blowing. Some people may say they weren't that bad. They weren't blowing that bad. That you were complaining and getting scared and being terrified. But we never know until we're in the situation. Just how that wolf came up with his side of the story. Everyone has their side of the story. And so we just thank the Lord that we can trust in Jesus because... Jesus knows everything about us and he knows our side of the story and Jesus is the truth and we're following after the truth and we give you all the praise, the honor and the glory no other name but the precious name of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen, Amen, Amen Now to the benediction May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace May the Lord bless and protect you May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you 
May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And everyone said amen, amen, and amen.